Well, I've previously shown a hypothetical example of a simple causal relationship that definitely cannot be learnt from data. I'll now present a more serious example that demonstrates a very common real-world problem where pure data-driven learning will fail. The following are known medical facts. Taking the contraceptive pill reduces the probability of pregnancy, so there's a causal link from pill to pregnancy. So when pill is true, we get a decrease in the probability. But pregnancy can cause thrombosis. So when pregnancy is true, we get an increase in probability. But taking the pill can cause thrombosis. So when pill is true, we get an increase in probability. Whereas in previous examples we've looked at, a confounding variable introduces a spurious relationship that's wrongly assumed to be causal, the danger here is the exact opposite. We might conclude from data alone that there is no relationship between taking the pill and thrombosis because of the confounding, because of the confounding effect of pregnancy and the possibility that the pill's positive effect on thrombosis is cancelled out by its negative effect on pregnancy. Here's the model with the correct structure, but with default probability values, there's nothing in here because we haven't learned anything yet. So we're going to now learn the probability tables here from data. This file thrombosis. You see there's 200 records in there, three variables. Say OK to that. And I'll run the model. So we can see, for example, what's learned here. Well, let's see if it's managed to capture the impact of pill on thrombosis, because we know the probability of thrombosis should increase for somebody taking the pill. So if this is true, we'll run the model. Well, there was no change here. But what it did change was the probability of pregnancy. That becomes very unlikely if you're taking the pill. Let's look what happens for somebody who's not on the pill. And 50% of the women in the study were on the pill. Well, the probability of pregnancy for these has gone up, but the probability of thrombosis has remained the same. So if you were looking at the impact of pill on thrombosis alone, it appears that there is no impact whatsoever. What's happened is that the pill's positive effect on thrombosis is cancelled out by its negative effect on pregnancy. And formally, we say that the model has become unfaithful to its effect since the probability of thrombosis is equal to the probability of thrombosis given pill, even though there's a direct arc between them. But what we're going to do now is fix pregnancy. Let's just remove these. If a woman is not pregnant, let's see the difference between taking the pill and not taking the pill person who is not pregnant is not taking the pill, their probability of thrombosis is 8%, whereas if they do take the pill, their probability of thrombosis has gone up to 10%. So there is an increase in probability of thrombosis for somebody taking the pill. What about for those who are pregnant? I'm going to clear this observation. For pregnant women, there's a 25% risk of thrombosis. If they're not on the pill, well, that's dropped to 20%. Whereas if they are on the pill, it's increased to 50%. So whether they're pregnant or they're not, once you know the state of their pregnancy, you can see that taking the pill always increases the risk of thrombosis. And yet we couldn't see that by just looking at the relationship of pill on thrombosis alone without taking into account pregnancy. If we tried to learn from the data just focusing on pill and thrombosis, we can do that as well and see what happens. So again, we're going to learn the tables here, again, from the same data set. You can see the table it's learnt, but it's learnt that there's no difference between taking the pill and not taking the pill. And of course, you can see that by just running the model. So if it's true, it makes no difference. Nor if it's false. So all we actually learnt from the data was the number of people on the study who took the pill, which was 50-50, and the overall number of people who had thrombosis, which was 14%. But we seem to have learnt that there's no relationship between pill and thrombosis. In fact, this will be the learnt structure from a causal discovery algorithm because it couldn't find any direct link between pill and thrombosis. And running that same data set,
all of this is the same as in the original model that was learned, the full structural model, but now it will actually give wrong results. It's not just that it hasn't captured it, because in this case, we'll show that if you take the pill, probability of thrombosis is just under 11%, Whereas if you don't take the pill, probability of thrombosis goes up. So it gives you the opposite of reality in terms of the effect of pill on thrombosis. Because structural learning algorithms are trying to determine where there is a direct dependency, not an indirect dependency.